Deepak, I've heard this all before, buddy. How do you deal with the, I've heard this all before, objection handle? Hi guys, my name is Deepak Shukla, founder at Pearl Lemon Sales. We're a sales training and development agency based in the UK, as well as the USA, and serving clients worldwide. And here today, in day number 59 of 119 days of cold calling training, we're here to talk about that I've heard this all before, objection handle. But before we get into it, feel free to click the link below to get access to 17 additional strategies that are not shared in this training. So fundamentally, um, this is um, the thing that we, we, we hope to not hear when you've got through your elevator pitch or you're midway through your elevator pitch and someone responds and says, Deepak, I've heard this all before. And that might be the case when you're selling something where the prospect has the perception that you're selling a service that's commoditized, that they can go out into the marketplace and get quite easily, whether it's specialist, a specialist market or a, a, a huge market, from the prospect's perspective, they feel that your pitch isn't unique. <coughs> so putting, the, putting aside the fact that it's worth you tweaking your elevator pitch, of course, to ensure that there's an element of uniqueness that comes into it, where and when that's possible, Putting that aside, we'll come to you know how to deal with those situations where you feel the product isn't unique and you've got to differentiate it somehow. How do you differentiate on the cold call? How is it that you deal with an objection that comes crashing into your world like Deepak, I've heard this all before, mate. First of all, the first thing to say is that emotional management mastery is a big thing here because if at that moment you stutter and say, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, for, yeah, so uh, yeah, when you say you've heard heard it all before. Did you hear that element just at the beginning where I, I did that? Yeah, what, what, yeah, what, what, no, no, yeah, yeah, short, short. So any stuttering or any pausing of that kind will be perceived quite rightfully as uh, inability to deal with ultimately what they perceive to be a quite typical objection that, you know, I've heard this all before. Do you guys not have anything different to say or are you all peddling the same thing? So that's the problem that can often leave you unstuck and only become amplified through the way that you respond. So if you can train that kind of response out of your vernacular, you're already going to do better because you'll immediately, most of the time, get shut down as soon as you start stuttering, saying, look, Deepak, Deepak, you know, I, I, I think we should just wrap it up here. I've heard all I need to hear. Thank you for your time. Feel free to send me an email. Goodbye. Something to that effect is how someone could wrap up and they may not even offer the email. And if they do offer the email there, it's not something that, you know, you necessarily um, in, intend to or want to take. So assuming you're able to keep yourself composed, um, you could, first of all, thank them for the objection. So an objection like this, you would not thank someone for I'm, I'm, a, I'm, for the, I'm a busy or I don't have time right now objection. But for the I've heard this all before objection, you first of all could thank the prospect by saying, well, first of all, thanks. Frank, thanks for letting me know that. Um, I will skip right. So thanks for letting me know that. I'll skip right to the part that makes us unique then. It's just, you know what, sometimes I need, I need to lead with that just to be sure that this is an area. So, so so an area that, you know, you're familiar with. And typically the prospect will interrupt you again and say, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm familiar. Let's, let's, let's go to the USPs then. So what you've done there by saying, well, thank you for um, letting me know that this is a space you're familiar with. You're responding, acknowledging that they've heard this all before, but you're not directly acknowledging or agreeing with the fact that your pitch is unique. How you're, how you're framing it in your prospect's mind is, okay, well, he said that part because he feels he needs to say that, but he's acknowledging that I'm not new to this pitch and therefore this service. So now he's going to go right to the part that makes him or, or, or them different. And that's the part that the thank you gets you. So someone says, look, I've heard this all before. I've seen this before. I've got lots of calls from you guys. It's the same thing all over again. You could say, well, first of all, Frank, thank you for, for letting me know that actually, because I'm glad that I already can tell that you're familiar with this product in the marketplace. So I'm guessing you want to hear about what makes us unique. And I should just probably move straight right straight to that part. And, 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 and that element, and of course, the prospect will most often say yes. It'd be a surprise if they say no to that response, that will open up a crucial three to five seconds of time where you say, well, first of all, let, let, let me just time that as I say it actually. Well, first of all, Frank, thanks for letting me know that this is something that you're familiar with. I'm guessing I should just move right to the USPs in that case, right? I'm assuming that's what you want to hear. Cool. 
So that, 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 that sentence that I've just said out loud took me seven and a half seconds. So there you go. Using that standard response to, and I've heard this all before, objection will ultimately give you an additional 7.5 seconds to figure out what it is that you're going to say next. Because that's what you need with a lot of these objections. You need to buy time because I can't tell you about the USPs of your product, but I can say that if you allow yourself some time, you can hopefully think quick enough to be able to move the conversation onto a different track. And you can talk about some of the things that you might know to be unique. And if you're in a commodity market, we'll also come to how can you spin out elements of uniqueness in a separate call. But fundamentally, it's, it's, it's using that response as a pause. Now, there's other alternatives that you can use. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily, let's say, advise them. But examples could be, I've heard other sales trainers talk about this before, pick your preference. These aren't mine, but I want to give you the options, which is, you know what, Frank, when you say you've heard this all before, do you mean, I mean, is it, is it, is it, do, do you, is, is it, was there something specific that you've heard before? Is it about like SEO generating results? So for example, if you're selling sales training, let's keep it on sales training. If I'm cold calling someone to pitch them sales training to say, hey, Richard, I could, re you know, we, we, we run a sales training team that can work one-to-one -one, as well as in a workshop environment. Deepak, sorry to interrupt you. I've heard about sales, you know, this type of sales training stuff before. It, you know, it's, there's, there's, there's nothing new. And to that, I could say, you know what, um, Frank, could you, is, it, is, it, is it okay if you could help me out? Now, when you say you've heard this all before, what is it exactly that you mean? Now, this is an okay response, actually. It might not work in some cases because they might respond and say, well, I'm not going to do your job for you and tell you, you know, which elements of it I've heard it all before. You tell me what's unique about your business. Or, no, I'm not going to tell you. But sometimes, let's say two to three, or five, two to three out of five times, the prospect might actually give you a helping hand and tell you what they think um, is, you know, common about your actual pitch. So there's no, um, you know, it is it is something you could experiment with by saying, yeah, you know what, Frank, thanks for as as long as you thank the prospect for the objection. To be honest with you, there's still quite a lot that you can do. So the critical part is to thank them, saying, you know what, th Frank, thanks so much for letting me know that this is something that you've heard before. Just out of curiosity, Frank, is it? I mean, was there something specific? within what I've said that you've heard before, it'd be good just for me to understand because then I can, you know, focus probably on other elements of the product that I think, you know, you'd re be really interested in potentially. So that would be um, a another potential way you could take it. But thanking them for the objection and then asking for more information or moving to something else is probably the ways to go. So thank and then ask for more info or thank, then move to a different topic. And that's the way that you can handle, in general, that I've heard this all before, objection handle. Remember, we've got 17 one seven gated strategies just waiting for you. All you need to do is bing, subscribe, as well as click the link in the description below to get access to those 17. Get some.